Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be starting on our Weld Design series. This is going to be about six different videos, um, all talking about different types of welds that CalcBook offers. Um, and today we're going to be starting with part one, which is going to be circular welds. So let's talk a little bit about circular welds, right? This is going to be in accordance with AIIC specification chapter J. Um, we'll look at, at 15th and 16th editions, they're basically the same. There's a, a little bit of a different way now that the 16th edition calculates uh, the weld capacity, but it ultimately re results in the in the same um, same capacity, just a little little different formatting on how they do that. We do follow the Blodgett method, right, which is treating the line as a, or sorry, treating the weld as a line with no throat. Um, this allows us to use sort of our our basic mechanics uh, properties to determine the stresses, you know, our, our P over A and M over S and that sort of thing, uh, determine the, um, the the loading on the weld, which we treat as a, a per inch basis. Um, as I stated, right, there's a slight difference between the 15th and 16th edition calculations of welds, so we'll take a look at that. And CalcBook allows you to look at all six degrees of freedoms um, for loading these welds. So we can look at FX, FY, and FZ. And then we can also look about moments about the x-axis, moment about the y-axis, and then MZ or torsion. So let's go ahead and take a look at our problem statement for today. Uh, let's assume that we have a uh, pipe 12 standard with an OD of 12.8 inches. The length from its support is six feet. It doesn't state it there, but it is fixed, welded at the support. Obviously, that's what we're looking at today. Uh, we're gonna be using E70 electrodes, and the loading is gonna be shown in the diagram, and we're gonna try to determine what the minimum fillet weld uh, required is to resist the applied loading. So we've got a vertical force at the end of this pipe of 12 kips pointing downwards. We've got a horizontal force of eight kips, and we have an applied torsion of 1450 kip inch. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we can go ahead and jump into our design module. Um, we are gonna go ahead and use the 16th edition and uh, I'll just talk about the differences uh, between the 16th and the 15th when we get to that part of the calculation. Um, so go ahead and click into the connection design. We'll scroll down here, and you see we've got all our different welds uh, here, and that's going to be part of our weld design series. So we're going to start with just the round weld design. So click Confirm, load that up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and enter in our parameters. Our diameter of the weld is going to be the outside diameter of the pipe, and that's going to be 12.8 inches. Um, for the weld leg size, we can leave that at a quarter inch right now. We'll come back and design that once we get our final calculation in place because uh, the, the problem statement asked us to uh, determine the size of the weld. So we'll go ahead and enter in our demands and we're going to assume that that was already the ultimate loads that we were given. So let's go ahead and enter in these, uh, these demands that we have from the problem statement. So for our force in the X direction, we have eight kips. For our force in the y direction, we have 12 kips. We have uh, no axial force <clears throat> on the member, so nothing in the uh, in the the out of the page direction. Our moment about the uh, about the x axis is going to be our um, y direction force, and then multiplied by the length of the the pipe. So that's going to be the 12 kips multiplied by the six feet, and convert that to inches, um, and that gets us 864 kip inch. And then similarly for the y-axis, we're going to take our fx force and multiply that by 6 feet and convert to inches, and that gets us 576 kip inch. And then we can enter in our torsion or our moment about the z-axis, uh, which is going to be that 1450 kip inch. Okay, so we've got all of our, everything entered now. Um, and then we can go start looking at our demand, right? So we need to figure out exactly what all of these loads resolve to um, into the the sort of the the combined stress on the weld. So um, <clears throat> these initial uh, drop downs here are just going to reference what we entered in as the the user inputs for the loads. But then we want to look at the demands on the round weld. So first we need to figure out what our section properties are for the weld treated as a line. So right, just a circle. So we figured our radius, our total length of the weld our section modulus of the weld, right, pi d squared over four, and then we calculate our torsional constant of the weld, pi d cubed over four. Then once we have that information, we can go through uh, each load and figure out what the stress is due to each of those components. So first we look at uh, the stress due to, to the FX load, so it's just gonna be the force in the X direction divided by the entire length of the weld, and that gets us 0.2 kips per inch. Same thing for the load in the in the y direction, Fy, gets us 0.3 kips per inch. 
and then we look at our uh, force in the z, which is zero. Then we look at our moment about x, so that's mx over our section modulus s, which gets of 6.71 kips per inch. Our m uh, y over S gets us 4.48 kips per inch, and then our torsion, or MZ, gets us as the MZ times radius over our torsional constant gets us 5.63 kips per inch. So now that we have all of those different components, right, we need to combine those. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the square root, some of the squares of our FX and FY component, and then we're going to get uh, add that to our, uh, our stress due to the, the direct torsion, right? That's going to get us sort of the in-plane load on the weld of 5.99 kips per inch. Then we want to look at the out-of-plane load on the weld, right, which is just going to be our direct tension, Fz, which is zero. And then we're going to take the square root sum of the squares of our moments about each axis, right, because that results in a upward force on the weld. And um, we'll combine those, and we get a, a, a shear per inch in the out-of-plane direction of 8.07 kips per inch. And then finally, we need to combine those two welds together, so we'll take the square root sum of the squares of our uh, stress in the long direction and our stress in the transverse direction, and we get a total demand per linear inch of 10.05 kips per inch. So that is our demand, right? And then we go and calculate our capacity. So we calculate what our effective weld area is, which is just going to be the, um, the weld size, and then divided by square root of 2, or you can multiply by 0.707, it gets us 0.18 inches. We calculate our nominal stress of the weld, FNW, which is just 0 0.6 times the Fe uh, XX of the weld. It gets us 42 KSI. And now is where we get to the difference between the 15th and the 16th direction. Uh, they have this K sub DS, which is the directional strength increase factor. Um, and I'll put this up on the screen here, but this is where you can increase the capacity based on the theta, uh, you know, due to uh, in comparison to the direction of, of the load, the longitudinal axis of the weld. So um, there is an allowable increase there, but for our purposes, we're going to take this as one. Um, and I'll show the difference here uh, between the 15th edition and the 16th edition uh, of how this is calculated. And then from there, we can just go ahead and calculate our uh, nominal shear strength per inch, which is just FNW times the area times this KDS value, which gives us a total capacity of 7.42 kips per inch. So we are over uh, designed by about 1.81. So we can go back to our weld selection and we can go up to, say, 3 eighths of an inch. That's 1.2, so maybe a half an inch, right? And that gets us 0 0.9. So half an inch weld, fillet weld, all the way around works for this design. Um, so that is a uh, circular weld design, right? It's part one of our weld design series uh, for this uh, calc book design series here. Um, and if you all are still listening, uh, we'd be happy to extend a 25% off discount uh, on your first month's uh, fee for your subscription of calc book. You can use the discount code YTCB2024 uh, during your checkout, or you can start with a two-week free trial uh, if you go to calcbook.com. So uh, thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time.